What's going on everyone, Brad here, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the Odyssey Multi-EQ Editor app, showing you each setting and talking about what they do, what you might wanna consider adjusting or disabling altogether, and ultimately trying to answer the question you're probably wondering right now. Is this app worth 20 bucks? Well, let's find out. Now, before we get started, I just wanna say that I've had this app for around a year or so now. I did pay for it with my own money. It wasn't given to me for free or anything like that. But initially, I was really hesitant to buy the app. I don't just randomly throw 20 bucks at an app and the reviews for the app itself on iOS devices in particular have been less than stellar. I like the idea of the app and what it could do, which I'll go over in a minute, but I wasn't sold and I wasn't sure if I would actually benefit from using it in my room. Now, the reason I bring this all up is because you may be in the same boat that I was in, which is what brought you to this video in the first place. Hopefully this video can help you decide if the app is right for you by going over all the settings and things this app can do, as well as my overall impressions of using it for over a year now. Now, if this does help, if this video itself helps, feel free to give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more home theater and gaming related content every single week. Now, for those unfamiliar with this app, I'll briefly go over what it does, which should answer why you'd even want it. And a bit of a disclaimer, this app will only work with select Denon and Marantz receivers and pre-pros. So if you have an older model, you wanna double check and make sure your model is actually supported before paying money for the app. So basically the multi-EQ editor app takes over your receiver or pre-pro's built-in Odyssey room correction and allows you to make additional adjustments that aren't available when using your receiver. Things like disabling mid-range compensation, for instance, adjusting the frequency range of the EQ for each speaker pair, as well as adding the ability to adjust and fine tune the EQ itself. Now, my favorite feature of this app by far is the ability to have multiple copies of the same room correction file, each with different settings. It's pretty awesome for testing out different settings while using REW to take measurements, for instance, and it makes it super easy to load up different profiles for music, movies, and games once you get everything set up the way you want it. So before I dive in and open up the app, if you'd like to help support the channel and you shop on Amazon anyway, consider using my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps keep these videos coming. So now let's open up the app and check out all the settings and stuff. All right, so we have the app open here and the main screen is pretty self-explanatory. You'll see I have a couple of room correction files already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open those up. But first, if you hit the little plus icon here by create new, it will ask you to select your AV receiver. Mine's not gonna pop up because I do not have it turned on currently. So that's why you won't see it, but you'll find your receiver there. You can go through the process. It'll guide you through it just like it would if you were doing it off of the, the receiver itself. So just hit done there. I'm gonna go ahead and select Odyssey default do not edit. Now I always make a default Odyssey thing whenever it does room correction and I label it do not edit. This is my base room correction. I'm not gonna change this. That way I can always revert back to it and this is the one I always make copies from. Right off the bat, we'll go ahead and start with speaker detection results. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. So basically on the left side, you have the front center surround, basically all of your speakers and subwoofers, your configuration. So you'll see in here, it's at mine to small. Subwoofer says yes. And then for the crossover, you'll notice it says 60 hertz for all my mains and the top middle 110 hertz that's because they're kind of lower end speakers and they don't really go very low uh, it doesn't have one for the subwoofer which is fine and if we hit the little arrow to go over uh, you'll notice that now we have the location of all the speakers on the left hand side the distance down the middle and then the level on the right so this is really useful to just kind of quickly at a glance make sure that it didn't royally screw anything up now the subwoofer i wouldn't pay attention to the distance there because that's more or less trying to time align the subwoofer with your mains and if you haven't seen that video that i made about that then definitely check it out in the card above but right now you see it's set to 20.5 all the levels on the right hand side are you know relative or or whatever, we can go in there and change these after we load it up, which is fine. But we're not gonna go in here and do any edits on this stuff, because remember, this is the do not edit file. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done here, and we're gonna go down to the next option, which is room correction results. Now here is where you can actually see what Odyssey is trying to do in your room. Now you'll notice the before on the left-hand side, that's without any room correction, obviously. 
And on the right hand side, we have after, which is a best case scenario. This is what it's trying to do. It does not mean it's actually going to achieve this. And you'll notice some funky little things going on here. So we have this dip around the 2000 Hertz range, which is actually mid range compensation. So that's normal to see that there because we haven't disabled that yet. And you'll notice that when we get to around 10,000 Hertz, it starts to taper off and that's that high frequency roll off I was talking about earlier. But we can basically go through uh, each of the speakers and check out our frequency response and make sure nothing weird is going on. So as you can see, both the left and right speakers, you know, look relatively the same. They are on the opposite sides of the main listening position, which is why they'd be a little off probably, just because, you know, one's over here, one's over there. So that's normal. And then if we go over to the center, again, we could see now my center is kind of up against the wall a little more than my fronts. I know I can't bring it out any further currently. That's causing this massive bass spike around 100 hertz, as you can see on the left there. But on the right, Odyssey is trying to take care of that. It doesn't perfectly fix it, but it does a really good job at trying to bring that down to a, a reasonable level where it's not calling attention to, to itself too much. So we go over and check these other ones real quick. They all look the same. Again, my surround left, and my surround right are right up against the wall. I don't really have any other option there. So you notice on the left, on both of them, they have this high peak, especially below 100 hertz. Odyssey just brings those down and makes them look relatively flat, which is what we want. And for the sub, you'll notice on the left, this is, I have my house curve applied, which is why it kind of has that slant to it. That's what you want. This is what Odyssey is trying to do to it. It's trying to flatten it out, which uh, I'll get to in a minute, but basically we don't want that. We won't have it do anything to the sub. So hit done there. I'll go down to target sound options. And this is where you can can select the high frequency roll off. The first one's the default. The second one has a little bit more of a gradual one. Personally, if you wanted a high frequency roll off, I would go with the second one just because it doesn't have that sharp decline, especially in the upper range there. We'll hit done again. We'll go to mid range compensation. This, this is basically where you can turn it off. We'll go down to the curve editor and you'll be able to see basically what it's doing. We even got the mid range compensation in there. In the upper right hand corner, you can select all the different speakers. Uh, they go by pairs except for the center, obviously. You can go in there and basically basically adjust the curve and I'll show you that in a second, but I'm just kind of briefly going over everything right now. And then the multi EQ filter frequency range is the bread and butter of why I like this app so much, because basically you could take this little slider here and bring it over and now everything below 657 hertz is being corrected and everything above it is not. So that's really, really handy. And I'll show you in a second what I do in my system. And then finally, we'll go to Odyssey settings. And this is basically just dynamic EQ and dynamic volume. So no real big explanation needed there. You know what they are. There's explanations for them on the left-hand side here. So if you like these, turn them on. If you don't, uh, turn them off. I leave mine off. So we have that file, which is the do not edit file. So I'm gonna hit done. It'll take a second and say, please wait. Remember, we didn't make any changes to it. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna hit edit in the upper right-hand corner. I'm gonna select the Odyssey default, do not edit. And I'm gonna hit the plus in the upper left hand corner. You'll notice it made a copy of it on the right hand side here. So I'm gonna hit edit again. I'm gonna select that text there and I'm just gonna label this for video test. That's fine. So we'll hit done and it will update with a the title there and we can go ahead and go in and select it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do right off the bat, go to mid range compensation, turn off all of it. I don't want it. And you'll notice as soon as I turn those off, if you recall before when we went to the room correction results, we saw that dip around 2000 Hertz and now is completely gone. So if we go over all of them here, you can also swipe instead of using the little arrows, which is handy. So you'll notice all of them do not have any mid range compensation, which is exactly what I want. You'll notice the subwoofer is still doing its thing here. We don't want that. So I'm gonna go into the multi EQ filter frequency range. Now I'm not gonna adjust these just yet, but I'm gonna select the subwoofer from the little drop down in the upper right. And then I'm just gonna drag that all the way to the left. So now Odyssey is doing nothing to the subwoofer. It's not really gonna do anything below 20 Hertz anyway. So we're gonna hit done. And now when we go back to room correction results, we'll go right back over to the sub and you'll notice Odyssey is not doing anything now. So this is exactly what we want. So you see my house curve is still in there perfectly how I set it up, not changed at all. So that's awesome. So now what we wanna do is in my room, I like to adjust the frequency range of the multi EQ filter. So essentially after doing some tests and measurements with REW, I've determined that in my room with my speakers, I don't want anything above 300 Hertz EQ'd or anything by Odyssey. So to do that, I'm just gonna drag this all the way over until we get to around 300 Hertz. Now it's really, really difficult to get it right on 300. I wish it would have a, a way where you could just type in a numerical value, but I try to hit 301, that's good. 
We'll go ahead and select the center. We'll do the same thing. Go back to 301, right around there. Perfect. Go to the surrounds, do the same thing. 301, come on, there we go. And then top middle, again, we'll do the 301 as well. See what I mean? I, I got it at 299, trying to get to 301. There we go. And then obviously the subwoofer, we're not doing anything there. So now when we go back into the room correction results, You'll notice that uh, it's not exactly flat anymore, but it's not correcting anything above 300 hertz on every single channel. Now, the reason I do this is because most of the problem areas in a room are basically 300 hertz or 500 hertz and below. You have to kind of experiment to figure out where exactly your problem area is in terms of frequency range. What we also can do is go into the curve editor. Now, this is where you can actually start adjusting things and maybe boosting certain frequencies and cutting certain frequencies. So if we just go to the sub real quick, so we can actually set a house curve here if we wanted to. Now I made a video on that and I'll leave a link in the description below. And I, I if I can put a card up here, I will. I can't remember if I've referenced the video already. So there you go. But basically we can select a point here and drag it down. So like a hundred, let's say we want it minus 10 at a hundred Hertz. Uh, that's close enough. And then here we want to bring it up uh, around 30 hertz and we just want it to be level. What you'll notice too sometimes is like, this might not be a straight line on the very left hand side here. So you'll you'll add a point and what'll happen is when you're trying to get it just perfectly, it'll keep doing this thing where it'll like just automatically snap to, you know, minus two or three decibels. Or if you're trying to do like a little boost, it'll do this thing. And then like you, you have a hard time selecting it. And so it's kind of finicky. Uh, and that's one of the biggest negatives I have about the app is, is it's very finicky. So, but there you go. I mean, that's pretty much everything that you could do with it. And if we go back to the front again, we could add a, a point here. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I would never do like this for instance, but if you have some certain problem areas, you can actually go in and tweak those uh, to your liking. So we could actually do our own EQ essentially and kind of fix some little problem areas or try to at least. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure that you have something like REW to use in order to verify those things aren't making things worse. But there you go. So finally, what we can do is I always hit done first. So it saves my profile because I don't want the app to crash for whatever reason. Not that I've had that happen. So now we're ready to upload it to the receiver. And basically it's pretty simple. You just hit the up arrow here, send to AV receiver. It will ask you to select a curve. Uh, so for this, I can select that one, the one on the right. Now, again, my AV receiver shows up now because I turned it on. I'm not going to go and send it here, but basically you'll send it and it'll go through the process and you're good to go. Now, I would go ahead and go into REW and check out some measurements and make sure everything's good. That's pretty much it. That's kind of the complete overview of this app and all you can do with it. So in the end, is this app worth the $20? Well, Honestly, it depends what you want to do with it. And I know, I know you are here looking for a clear defining answer, but honestly, that is the clear defining answer. It really does depend highly on what you want to do with it. If you're not into tweaking stuff to try and get the most performance out of your system that you can and are completely happy with what Odyssey already does by using it, you know, the built-in one from your receiver, then it's probably going to be a waste of money for you. But if you are someone who likes to tweak your settings, then maybe you already use REW to check out the frequency response in your room too, then this app is totally worth it. I'd also add that if you aren't a fan of Odyssey because of its tendency to make things sound worse or it rolling off the high frequencies like it always does, then it might be worth checking out the app to have it only correct frequencies up to 300 or 500 hertz. Now for me, I adjusted the frequency range to only apply EQ up to 300 hertz. And with my speakers in my room, it made a massive, massive difference. And it sounds much more natural with clarity. I just didn't get before when Odyssey EQ'd the entire frequency range. I did confirm this with measurements taken with REW. So if you are interested in seeing a video where I go over those measurements before and after adjusting the EQ range, or if you have any questions about what I covered in this video at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you everyone for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one.